Good morning, mighty men. There were many testimonies that came out of the Welsh Revival of 1859-1860. Thomas Charles Edwards was principal of the University College of Wales, and he testified this. Here came two plain men to Bela and preached Christ simply, without fuss, without much education or eloquence, but they had more. Eternity came into the service. Heaven came into the place. The change I experienced was sufficient evidence to me of the divinity of Christianity. I was previously a lump of damnation, and in that service I became a new creature. Thomas Phillips testified, Religion and its concerns are the chief topics of conversation throughout the neighborhood. Drunkenness is diminishing and other sins seem to die away. The very countenances of the young people seem changed. Those who never attended the sanctuary now attend the prayer meetings. There is a visible change in the converts. Many of them weep almost constantly, are hardly able to sleep at night. Sir Henry Jones testified, The evidence of the presence and power of the Spirit was overwhelming. Men and women were, quite genuinely, beside themselves with religious excitement. They broke out in the services, glorifying God by the help of hymns and verses, and not infrequently in language of their own, which, owing to their exalted condition, was sometimes marvelous in its power and beauty. Their voices mingled together in a confusion that usually put the preacher to silence and not seldom lasted far into the night. Our Bible reading is chapters 8 and 9 of Acts. 8 and 14 says, Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Chapter 9, verse 17. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, this is Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. Let's pray. Lord, we're asking that there would be a pouring out of your Spirit on what is today's Samaritan Church, the church that has been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, but has not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lord, we're asking for the Spirit to fall. These are days in which the Holy Spirit is going to be necessary for every believer, not an optional add-on. We must be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in power to go through the days that are ahead. So we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that we would have that outpouring. Lord, that you would give us an outpouring like we see in these stories about the Welsh people and the Welsh revival. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that we would have that kind of power, that kind of manifest presence of your glory, even in our church services, even in our Sunday meetings, that people would come and expect a normal Sunday meeting, but Lord, you would pour out your Spirit. And God, we pray that you would move in our nation. Lord, we pray that it not just be in the church, but it go outside the church and that it spill out into our communities, spill out into our schools, spill out into our businesses and our workplaces and into the marketplace in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you would cause people to have that road to Damascus kind of of, uh, outpouring that came upon Saul, who became Paul. And Lord, that There would be those who are persecuting your church now who would miraculously and by revelation be turned and glorify you and spread your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.